This is exactly what I've wanted for years. So, Personas, if you're watching, just copy this. Absolutely no shame. Take this and implement this into Studio One. So in the middle of all this Studio One 6.6 .6 fiasco, I've started to ask myself, what sort of things, what kind of improvements do I want to see in Studio One? And now I've actually made a few videos about this, including a community feature wish list. So I'll make sure to link those down below. But after some time, I've concluded that to me, the two things that I would love to see immediately is an improvement to MIDI drum workflow programming and sampling. Now over this past week and a half, I've opened up a ton of other DAWs to see what is available out there. What do other people have that maybe we could improve upon? And I've opened up everything from Logic to Cubase, FL Studio, Ableton, and side note, I know Persona still has a lot to kind of add and improve upon, but in my opinion, Studio One is still the best looking and the most intuitive DAW out in the market. No offense to my Cubase people, but I opened that thing up and man, that thing was ugly. Oh, no, 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 no. I know Cubase has a lot more production features compared to Studio One, but it just wasn't for me. Anyway, as I'm opening up these softwares, I ended up in Logic. And as I'm looking through it, I discover their amazing drum machine designer instrument. And it is exactly the thing that I've been wanting in Studio One for years. So then to explain it to you, I'm going to make a quick beat both in Studio One and in Logic to demonstrate the differences in drum workflows and ultimately why I think that at the moment, Logic is killing Studio One when it comes to programming MIDI drums. Okay, so let's start at home base here. Obviously, this is Studio One. And just to make this easy, I've dragged in a sample loop. That sample loop sounds like this. So to program drums in Studio One, the easiest way to go about this is to bring up an instance of Impact XT. Now, Impact is our native drum machine, drum programmer, sequencer, whatever. And it's very reminiscent to a machine or like an MPC because you have a four by four grid where you can load in different samples to be able to play or to program. Now, although you can choose to load in samples that Personas gave you when you downloaded the software from this menu, you could also drag in your own samples. And that is exactly what I'm gonna do today. So I'm gonna go over to the files tab here on the browser, which is essentially a bridge between your computer and Studio One. So this is a, an external hard drive with all my sounds, and I'm just going to drag in a few different samples. So we have a kick here, a hi-hat, and let's bring in a snare. Here we go, perfect. Now, once you get to this point, you're gonna have your samples here on the pad. And if you have something like an Atom, they'll also pre-map to the pads. Perfect. Once you have your drums recorded here, we can open up this MIDI event. And if you're someone who likes to quantize your drums, you can just press the letter Q and magic. Okay, so pretty easy, right? We just recorded three basic drum sounds and everything sounds great. But hear me out. Now, the first thing that I consider is that on impact, every pad here is mapped to a specific note in the note editor. So for example, here, the kick is on C1, the snare is on C sharp one, and so on and so forth. Now we can see this further if I open this up and I go over to the piano roll here or the piano view as Studio One calls it, right? Perfect, and if I go over to the drum view, same thing. Now at face value, this is pretty great because you're able to change your patterns in one window. So if I was like, you know what? I actually want another snare here, I can, or another hi-hat here, I can do that. If I want to change my, my kick, I can move that back. Whatever, you can make all of those changes in one window. That is good. Now, what's not good is that if you're a little bit more advanced, doing more things becomes a little tedious. For example, if you make urban genres like hip hop, pop, trap, whatever, oftentimes we will take certain sounds like the snare or the hi-hat, and we will send certain notes of that pattern up and down to lower or higher notes to create some interesting variants and kind of spice things up. Well, with this current setup, you can't really do that because as I mentioned, every sound is mapped to a specific note. So if I were to try to 
For example, take this hi-hat and send it to a higher note or a lower note. The moment I do that, I'm actually changing the sound because again, every pad, every sound is mapped to one specific note. On top of that, if you take a look, all of the drums got recorded into one track, into one single MIDI event. And again, in the beginning, this is useful to have everything on one window. But what about when you want more control? Typically, when it comes to drums, I like to have every single sound tracked out because that way I get to deal with MIDI events as opposed to MIDI notes, which helps me arrange my song much more efficiently. So for example, let's say that I wanted to cut out the snare from bar three to five. Now currently as it stands, what I would first have to do is split this MIDI event where I wanted the change to happen open up that MIDI event, find my snare, highlight it, delete it, and then we have what I want. However, to me, that is incredibly tedious and I'd rather work with MIDI events completely because let's say for example that this entire track was a snare, then to make those quick arrangement decisions, I can just mute that event or delete it completely. It makes the workflow for arranging so much quicker. So let me show you how I kind of fix these two things to be able to do what I want to do with Studio One. Now, when it comes to separating tracks, that one is relatively easy. All you have to do is basically right click on the MIDI event, go down to instrument parts, and then explode pitches to tracks. Now from here, as you just saw, all of the pitches were sent to their own individual tracks. And then from here, all you have to do is basically just rename them because Studio One does not do that for you. But effectively, you have everything here mapped out, tracked out individually. And then we have the drums together. Now this is great, but the caveat is that although we have separate tracks for our drums, every single track here is still linked to the same instance of impact. What this ultimately means is that if I wanted to sort of pitch the sound like I was talking about earlier, if I were to open up that piano roll for that sound and I try to send this to a different note, because it is still mapped to that same instance of impact, I'm still changing the sound. So to fix that problem, what I usually have to do is I have to go over to my browser bring in an instance of sample one, which is our native sampler, and then use this instead. Now sample one is incredibly useful and it shares a lot of the same features as impact because you can mess around with the pitch, the filter, the amp, on top of being able to map different sounds to different parts of the keyboard, you can mess around with the envelopes, and not a lot of people know this, but you can also record straight into sample one. So I could record a clap, for example, and have that be a sample inside of here. However, the biggest difference is that whenever you load a sample into here, it spreads it across the keyboard, effectively putting it in, in its own piano roll, which gives us the functionality to do what I want to do here. So usually in this scenario, what I have to do is load up sample one, find the same sound that I want to mess with, bring in here, right? And look, right, fantastic. Then I have to rename this. Then I have to bring the MIDI down, open this up, but I have to switch all the notes to C3 because that is the root for sample one. So, right. And now finally from here, I can start to send notes up and down to different pitches. So. Maybe add one here. And now the same thing for the snare. If I wanted to pitch the snare up and down to add different hits, accent hits or whatever, then it's the same thing. I have to bring another instance of sample one, load it with the appropriate sample. So there it is. Bring the MIDI down from the impact, send it up to C3 and then start to add my different accent hits. So you get the idea. And as I mentioned in my previous video, I can still get to the end goal. I can still do everything I need to do, but it just takes a little bit longer. So now let me show you how this same workflow goes over in Logic. Okay, so here I am in Logic and like before I have the same sample loop, but what I also have in front of me is their drum machine designer. Now, if you take a look here, this looks very identical to other drum machines. You have the four x four grid and you drag in samples in the same way that you did in Impact. I basically just dragged them in and we get sound. 
Now, the first thing that I want you to notice is that they have the same functionality that we have in sample one, but within this virtual instrument. And I think that's genius. Now, aside from that, you'll also notice that at face value, this looks and works identical to impact because every single sample is mapped to a specific note. So again, kick is on C1, the snare is on C sharp one, the hat is on D1 and so on and so forth. So I am ready to go to record my drums. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so at this point, it's still pretty much identical to what we have in Studio One. If I were to open up that MIDI, you can see that everything is still in one window, which I do think is important to keep. I think in the beginning, it is incredibly important to have everything in one place where you can move your patterns around and make quick adjustments to your drums. Now, this is where the similarities stop, because if you take a look, despite the fact that we have everything on one track, there's a little arrow to the left of the drum machine icon that if I were to drop down, would show you the individual tracks for each pad slash sound that were already there pre-created without me having to do anything. Additionally, check out what happens whenever I click on one of these subtracks and then play my MIDI keyboard. As you can see, every individual subtrack here has its own independent piano roll, giving you way more control as to how you want to program your drums without having to go through all these workarounds. For example, I can choose to program all my drums into one single track, and then if I want to separate them later, go over to right click, convert, and separate by note pitch. Now this looks identical to what we had in Studio One, but again, the difference is that if I were to go to any one of these tracks, every single track here has its own individual piano roll. So now I can simply add more notes and pitch them up and down to however I want. Right, I can just... Same thing with the hi-hat, if I swip, swap over to here, I can start to pitch these up without having to bring any sort of other instrument, it is really, really easy. Now, the other way you could do it is if you wanted to, you could record individual parts. Instead of recording onto the main track, you can drop this down and record each individual part, sample, sound, individually into its own individual and independent piano roll. Now, I have more thoughts on how to improve the sampling in Studio One, but when it comes to drum programming, this is exactly what I've wanted for years. So, Personas, if you're watching, just copy this. Absolutely no shame. Take this and implement this into Studio One. But that's just my opinion, and now I want to hear from you. What do you think of Drum Machine Designer? Do you think this workflow is nice? Do you think it's not useful? Would you want to see this in Studio One? Let me know in a comment down below. Now, I don't know if we're ever going to get something like this, but in the meantime, if you are a Studio One user and you want to learn how to program your drums using what we have, then I do have a video that covers that in more detail, which you can watch right over here.